I'm Shigeru Miyamoto, a game developer of Nintendo. For the earliest video games, one programmer could develop a whole game by themselves. As technology advanced, sound and music specialists and graphic designers have also played a part in development. Since Donkey Kong's release in 1981, I've created games where Mario uses his jump abilities to face off against rivals. The idea for Super Mario Brothers was born at a meeting where I presented my desire to create a bigger hero who runs around in a setting with beautiful graphics. We discussed whether this will appeal to the current market and brainstorm new ideas. We wanted to create a robust Famicom game where large characters move around. It used to be normal for Famicom games to have stages that didn't scroll. There was side-scrolling for some shooting games, but not for any other. We wanted to create a game where large characters are animated in land, sea, and sky settings. This was probably the first Famicom game I've created, which had blue skies. Before, I focused on creating dark-colored landscapes so it's easier to see the outlines. <laughs> Here you can see some drawn boxes with notes saying Mario, enemy, and, and ground. When we were looking through the old documents, we found this. We did. This is actually very precious. When we were first thought of Super Mario Brothers, we are talking about making a game utilizing the earth, sea, and sky. Yeah. And this is when we were thinking about how to play in the sky. He suggested Mario to <laughs> float around in a cloud and shoot at coins from it. But I gave him a solid nope because it was too much work and impossible to do at the time. But uh, now you can. So in Super Mario Maker, you can move around in a cloud and throw fireballs. You can finally fly around like Lakitu. This was finally made possible. Thirty years later, it finally happened. First, we decided what kind of course to make. At the time, we didn't really use computerized tools. Instead, we hand drew the stages and inputted data based on those drawings. For example, we drew the layout of the stage on graph paper, like this one here, and then we handed it over to the programmer, who inputted it after converting it to numerical data. So we didn't see the finished course until the next day or so. This is a stage layout for what appears on a TV screen. When zoomed out, it is just this small segment on this course map. This paper layout was handmade by us. So this is how we planned out a side-scrolling course. If there are too many edits drawn on the paper, we layered on some tracing paper to write some more. We took this process very seriously because programmers put a lot of time inserting this data manually. We couldn't slack off or experiment too much with the program. If we kept changing our minds, the programmers would scold us, saying, this is the last time we're changing this. We wrote out what kind of stages we wanted to create on a giant whiteboard. Then we created a layout by pasting notes on the board, like what the background should be or what would appear. The process is actually still the same for the Super Mario series. 